Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to install a SATA SSD into a desktop computer. And a big thanks to the guys at Kingston Technology for sending me out this SSD to make this video. So this is the KC600 and I've got the 512 gigabyte model. It comes in a variety of sizes. So this is a two and a half inch SSD working on the SATA 3 standard and featuring 3D TLC NAND. It really pushes what SATA 3 can cope with in its read and write speeds of 550 and 520 megabytes per second, respectively. It has some great security features built in with hardware-based encryption. And as well as that, it comes with a long five-year guarantee, so you shouldn't have any problems there. Okay, so before we come on to install the drive, I want to point out a couple of important features about the SSD. You'll see there's holes on the back, but also holes on the side for mounting screws. And this is because there's a whole variety of different methods of mounting hard drives and cases. So the hard drive needs to cover all of these. The other thing to mention is the connection. So you can see these gold pins at the end of the drive. While this looks like one connection, it's actually two separate L-shaped connectors, a larger one and a smaller one. So the larger one is to power the drive and a power cable is gonna go from this to your power supply. The smaller one is actually how data is transferred and a cable from this is going to go to your motherboard. Okay, so I've removed the back cover from the PC and on this particular PC, the SSDs install on this little bracket here. So the first job is to remove the bracket from the PC. And to do that, all we simply need to do is untighten this little thumb screw. And then the bracket should just slide out. Okay, so the next thing to do is to mount the SSD to the SSD bracket. So you can see we're gonna use the little holes on the back of the drive, line them up with the bracket and screw the screws in at the back. We're gonna line it up. Turn it over, and then it's just a matter of screwing the four screws in to secure the drive to the bracket. Now importantly, these screws will come with your case. Every case has a slightly different method for securing hard drives and brackets and cages, so just follow the instructions that come with your case. Okay, next thing to do is to put the bracket back into the case. The only problem is once I do that, I'm not gonna be able to show you things in as much detail. So I'm gonna show you the steps for plugging the cables in here on the table. So as we have mentioned, underneath the drive, we've got two L-shaped brackets. This longer one is for SATA power, and the shorter one is for SATA data. Okay, so I've got a SATA power cable here, which is gonna plug in from our power supply. And you'll notice it's also in an L shape, which lines up with this L shape on the drive itself. So all we need to do is line the L's up, and it's simply just gonna push in the place. There we go, so the drive now has power, but it doesn't have data. So this is where we're gonna need a data cable, and this is a SATA data cable, which should ship with your motherboard. And again, it is in a smaller L shape, so it's really important when you're plugging it in, you line the L up with the drive. So it's gonna plug in this way here. And we're just gonna push. This particular cable has a little lock on it. So there's a little silver connector here. So if I'm gonna unplug it, I'm gonna to have to push the silver connector in to allow me to unplug the cable. So all we would need now to do now to install the drive is to plug in this other end of the power cable into the power supply and this other end of the SATA data cable into a SATA connector on our motherboard. So let's put the bracket into the case and I'll show you how to install this. Okay, installing the bracket back in the case is just the reverse of removing it. So we're gonna line it up with the sockets, slide it in and re-tighten the thumb screw. Okay, so the next stage is to plug in the cables. 
So you can see why I've shown you it on the table. You're not going to get a great view here. So I've got the SATA power cable and I'm going to have to make sure I line the L up with the socket on the SSD. Okay, next thing to do is to plug in the data cable, making sure I'm lining it up the right way and it pushes and locks into place. So the only additional thing is we need to plug this other end of the data connection into our motherboard. Okay, so our motherboard has six SATA connectors. So all we need to do is plug the other end of the data cable into the motherboard. Again, taking care to line the L up. Okay, and that's clipped and locked into place. Okay, that's the hard drive installed, but there's a few more steps we need to do before we can use it. So we just need to pop the back cover on and then we need to load up Windows to format the drive. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you get into Windows is go down to the search bar in the bottom left hand corner and type in disk management. That's going to bring up the create and format hard drive partitions in the control panel. So click on this. Okay, so at this stage you should get a little pop-up coming up to ask you to initialize the disk. So go ahead and click OK. So our disk is now showing up. In our case it's down as disk zero and we've got 476.92 gigabytes of unallocated space. So we now need to go ahead and format the drive before we can actually use it. So what we need to do is right click on the unallocated space and click on new simple volume. Go ahead and click next. So it's now asking us to specify a volume size. So we're just going to use the whole of the drive. So we're not going to change what has been filled in the box. We're just going to click next. On the next screen, we need to assign a drive letter or path. So it's already been assigned the letter D. There's no reason for us to change that. So we're just going to click next. Obviously you want to change the letter. You can change it from the pull down menu. Okay, so we need to format the drive before we can use it. So we need to pick the file system. By default, it's set to NTFS. If we want to change that, we can do so in the pull down menu. So you can see the volume label is down as new volume. So if we leave that as it is, that's going to be the name our drive is called. So it's worth changing that. So to help me identify it, I'm going to call it KC600. So I've changed that in the box and then I'm going to hit next. So now we can see that disk zero, which is called KC600, has the letter D, has a primary partition in NTFS of 468.92 gigabytes. Also now, if we go into about this PC, you'll see that the disk is showing up as one of the drives that we have now the option to use. Okay, the next thing I want to do is do some benchmarks to check that we're getting the advertised speeds. So if I go into the Microsoft Store, go to the search menu in the top and type in Crystal Dismark and go ahead and install the app. Okay, so we're just going to do a default test. So the only thing we're going to change is we're going to go up to the drive and pick Drive D, which is our drive by Kingston Technology. We're not going to change any of the other settings and we're just going to click all and then it's going to run the test. Okay, so that's the results in and you can see there the read speeds were at maximum 551.79 megabytes per second and the maximum write speeds of 475.21. So fairly close to the advertised maximum that the drive can reach. Okay, so as you can see, adding an SSD into a desktop computer is really a straightforward job. Hopefully you find this video helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and please check out the other videos on my channel. There's plenty of other PC building and related content on the channel. Finally, a big thanks again to Kingston Technology for sending out the SSD used in today's video. Thanks for watching.